If there is one thing that freaks radio kit builders out more than anything, it would have to be toroids. Ah! I'm going to show you why you should not fear whining these suckers and reign victorious. Up next. <coughs> Welcome to the House of Ham. I'm Bob WV7W. There is this big fear for many kit builders when it comes to whining toroids. I'm not really sure why that is. In this video, I'm going to show you just how simple it is to whine toroids and why this should not be something that turns you away from kit building. Probably the hardest thing about whining toroids is counting. I know, this is a challenging task. I mean, we only learned how to do this in kindergarten, maybe even earlier. Don't get me wrong, it's easy to get distracted and lose count. But I have a few tricks up my sleeve to help you out. Now, I assume that most of you can count to at least 10. If you can count to 10 without losing count, you're well on your way. Trick number one, count out loud. It may seem silly, but if you count out loud, you're less likely to lose your spot. I mentioned you only need to count to 10, but what do you do if your torrid has more than 10 wines? Trick number two, have a notepad and pencil handy. After each 10 turns, make a tick mark. You can even get partway through whining one, and the XYL calls you to take out the trash. So long as you stop in a multiple of 10 and made note of it, you should be good to go. I won't stop until I hit a multiple of 10. Now let's say you have a torrid that requires 24 turns. Do the first 10 and make a tick. Do 10 more, make another tick. And finally, wind the last four turns. But what do you do if you lose count? Trust me, it does happen. This is where some magnification really helps. I use these magnifiers I got off Amazon. Then you can just count the turns with either your fingernail or a toothpick. The biggest issue for me is holding a small toroid like the T37s used in the QRP Labs kits. If you're like me, you will find that holding these little guys while you're winding them will cause your fingertips to get sore after just a few of them. But I've come up with a solution that I designed and 3D printed. This little device will hold the toroid while you wind them. Not only does it grip the toroid, but it also holds the first turn of wire. Now I have made the 3D files available for free if you want to print one of these for yourself. And there's a link in the description below. To start winding a toroid, you need the right amount of wire. Kits from QRP Labs will tell you how much wire to cut off, and they're pretty generous in their amount, so there's no need to add more than they suggest. I start my first turn by pushing one end of the wire up from the bottom until I have a nice length of lead. This is turn number one. I then to continue to wind, counting out loud each time I pass the wire through the center of the toroid. Be careful not to get any twists or kinks in the wire and give it a good little tug to snug it up. Depending on the number of turns, I may squeeze the wires together after each turn or two. It seems to me to be easier to spread them out later than to squish them together. If you have a low number of turns, you may choose not to do this. And for toroids with high number of turns, you may have to remove the holder to get those last few turns on. Once you have your toroid wound, you have to be able to solder it in place. And this is the next little gotcha on toroids, and that is getting the enamel off the wire so you can get a good solder joint. This is a very common issue for kit builders. There are a lot of methods to removing the enamel, but I'm going to show you my favorite, which is almost 100% guaranteed to get a good solder connection. The first thing I do is scrape off the enamel of each lead with an X-Acto knife. Be careful not to nick the wire and break it. A light pressure is all that is needed. Better to go over it a couple times lightly than to reef on it and break the wire. I go over each wire in four directions to get as much enamel off as possible. Once I do this, I take my fingers and rub off any remaining enamel rankings. Next, I like to tin my wires. One word of caution here is to make sure your PCB holes are large enough to support doing this. Flux is your friend here. I add some flux, 
and hold the toroid in a clip. You do not want to hand hold this as the wires will get hot. Ask me how I know. I also point the wires down a bit to let gravity carry any solder blobs down towards the end. I then take my iron and touch the wire and start adding a little solder as I move it towards the end of the wires. I will often run the iron over the wire a couple of times to get a smooth tint. The last thing to do is to solder your new inductor in place. With proper preparation, this will be a fairly simple task. I feed the wires into the appropriate holes in the board, and then I like to hold the toroid in place with a little blue tack. I flip the board over and give each wire a little tug to ensure they're tight. Then I add some flux. I like this paste flux in a tube and I apply it with a toothpick. Don't be stingy with the flux, it really helps you to get a good solder joint. Solder the leads and then I clip them off with some flush cutters. I then flip the board back over and remove the blue tack. There you go, one toroid installed. Toroids are necessary in radio kit building, but I hope you're a little less afraid of them now. They are a bit time consuming, but with some patience and practice, there is really nothing difficult about winding them. I hope you found this helpful, and it will inspire you to go ahead and start building kits. Until next time, this is WB7W73.